he's got dementia Alzheimer's. To actually bring him to Sonnet Hill was really easy. To put him in the other homes was terrible. Um, we had a very bad experience the first time. And, and so we moved him to a place in Merced, um, memory place, that swore that they could take care of him. But he had pretty extensive um, wandering and escapism behaviors, uh, which became extremely dangerous at home. Um, and he had other behaviors that made it impossible for me to keep caring for him, even with my three daughters. We have three daughters. We've been married almost 50 years. Uh, so my three daughters and I, and they always get me emotional, um, but they have been an amazing uh, support for me. Um, so the, the four of us got together. We made this little team here with the elven um, leaf thing there. So we are the we are Team Merv um, in uh, in like in the same vein as the um, Lord of the Rings nerds that we are. <clears throat> Um, but to move him to a place in, in Merced was really difficult, and he escaped from there several times, even though he shouldn't, and they didn't let him wander, and they didn't take care of him, and they didn't um, suit his needs at all. Um, so after 24 hours, they said, he needs to go someplace else. So it put us in a very bad place. Uh, we had no place else to put him. Um, so we were not taken care of. We weren't supported. We had no... Um, options for what to do with him and um, it was really difficult we didn't even have a, a doctor at the time so we were using hospices um, uh, services and doctors and um, they were bare minimum but they were a lifeline to us at the time uh, and my daughters are all over the Bay Area so they got on the hunt and they looked at facilities in San Ramon they looked in um, uh, Santa Rosa, they looked in all over San Jose and Merced, and the only place that came even remotely close to being acceptable was Sonnet Hill. Um, and it was such a lifeline that um, I think I burst into tears as soon as I met David, because um, I just felt the love and the acceptance and the safety of that place. It is wonderful to be here. It, it's very safe and loving. We get treated like we are family. I wasn't going to cry, <laughs> but um, it was just such a wonderful feeling to know that my sweetie pie is taken care of well, and he's loved and he's happy, as happy as he can be. He still wants to go home sometimes, but he's still um, he's happy here, and he's comfortable, and I think he knows why he's here now. He didn't at first, um, but even in moments of crisis, we had a crisis a few weeks ago, and David and his team came together for us and literally saved his life. It, this place is amazing to me, and it will always be a place of solitude for him, or sanctuary, I should say, and um, he loves it here. He, he plays games, and he dances, and he sings, and he's silly. He thinks he's host of, the, of everything, so he has to take care of everybody else that's here. And he thinks he's the boss, so he <laughs> likes, to, likes to make sure everybody's doing their job the correct way. But he loves the food, and he wasn't eating before he came here. Um, he'd lost 86 pounds before he got here, because he just refused to eat. Um, and now he's eating, and he's stable, and he's healthy again. And uh, that's just the, the most I could ever wish for. He was not in a good place before he came here. He was anxious, he was angry, he was hitting himself in the head with whatever he could find, banging on doors, he was breaking doors, he was breaking windows. He was not the guy I married 50 years ago. Alzheimer's or dementia came on rather dramatically. We were kind of stunned by it all because it happened so fast. I think he'd been hiding it for years, and when he couldn't hide it anymore, it was a real shock to all of us. We thought maybe it was a medication disorder of some sort. We didn't know what it was. His doctor was unavailable because he died, and he actually committed suicide. So Murr was really shaken by that. So hospice was a line of salvation for us, basically, because it gave us tools that we didn't have before. We had very little support, um, so we were floundering 
Um, and then uh, when we found um, Sonnet, it just felt like home. It felt like a, a peaceful, wonderful place to be where he could be accepted and all of his crazy behavior was okay. And that wasn't the case before. Um, and he, after a few trial periods of, uh, um, what do you call it, um, <laughs> moments of um, terror and uh, self-harm um, periods. He settled in and he settled down and we got him on a proper medication regimen and he is calm and he's quiet and he's happy and he's joking around and he's playing. So we were able to eliminate the, ho the need for hospice services and um, he's, he's doing well. He's, he's thriving. We didn't even expect him to be living at this point um, a month or two ago. It was, it was going downhill so rapidly. Um, and with that dramatic weight loss, we couldn't get that under control. And he's got diabetes, and he's got insomnia, and he's got other issues with depression and um, things that make, make it really difficult to know what's going on. And when he couldn't tell us what was going on, it was extremely difficult to know how to treat him. So um, we were pretty desperate, um, but my daughters have been my rock, and they've been his rock. Um, and I don't know where we'd be without each other as well as Sonnet. He, um, he's goofy, he's silly, and he can be goofy and silly here. He can be kind and sweet and be the person he's always been. Before we came here, Merv was, he, his initial, initial um, symptoms were forgetfulness and lack of judgment and lack of logical um, uh, decision making. He would put um, milk in the cupboard and um, sugar in, you know, his stew or something and he would mix things up. He began to be um, a flight risk, so he would he would leave at all hours of the day and night. Um, the cops brought him home at 3 a.m. one time, and then he took my car and drove someplace that he shouldn't have been driving at all. I had had to hide his keys. Um, then he began to not eat, and he wouldn't take his pills. And when he didn't take his medications, and flat out refused him and was starting to get really obnoxiously um, stubborn about certain things and then he started to get super angry. He would get really angry at anything and everything. If he wasn't the one making the decision, it was my fault. And um, he started to react to that and I began to feel a little bit afraid for my life. Um, and that was the point where we decided we had to do something with him. Began to um, hallucinate. He would um, he would whisper me to me, you know, who's in the car in the back seat, and there's no there's nobody there. Um, yeah, the first place we put him in um, was in Atwater, and um, he was there 24 hours before they said we can't deal with him. He needs to go someplace else, and it was it was pretty cruelly done. It was. Um, it was all his fault. It wasn't their fault. Even after they had promised us that they would take care of him, and they knew how to handle Alzheimer's patients and or dementia patients, and they um, insisted that they had no idea how bad his behaviors were. And I, we had clearly told them because we were terrified that he would be a danger to anybody else with them uh, in the home, and the, he clearly was not. So we had to move him, and we had to move him quickly, um, and that was a real difficult thing to do. Um, we interviewed several places in San Ramon and San Jose, um, and as soon as I walked into Sonnet Hill, I knew that, that was, this was the place. Um, I just knew it, and we, we still visited other places. But I said, nothing compares to Sonnet Hill. That's where I want my honey to be. I just felt it. Um, I felt the love, I felt the um, acceptance, I felt the trust, um, and I needed to trust somebody. I was very scared 
and terrorized that um, he wouldn't be a good fit. And it was really a difficult thing to do, the, all, the whole searching, the whole analysis, the whole um, trying to figure out where he should be for the best interest of him, of him as well as the family. And the decision and in the care and love that we felt here, all of the employees are just amazing. They treat all of the family as if they are just part of the crowd, part of the family, and it's all one big happy place. It sounds really trite to say, but um, it means so much when you've come from so little after having a wonderful life together of so long and having it all fall to pieces and then having it come back together again was really important to me. I love Summit Hill partly because it's beautiful. It's um, innovative and it's special and it serves good food and he can be safe here, he is secure, he um, can wander and he can tinker and he can mess with stuff and he's safe. He can be Merv. He can be himself and we can be with him anytime we want. I've actually temporarily off and on moved to Merced or to San Jose to live with my daughter while I'm visiting him and yet I, can, I feel like I can go home to Merced when I want to, uh, when I need a break. Um, I can go home and take care of our house. And um, even our dog is welcome here. We have a funny little silly puppy that just adores being here because he can see Dad, and Merv is just ex so excited to see her. Um, so even our dog is welcome here, even though she's kind of a, kind of a handful. <laughs> yeah, if you have a loved one that needs a special comfortable place to be, to be safe, to be themselves, to be um, cared for lovingly and um, can make their own choices and can be who they really are, who they used to be before the disease took over. Um, and that's not an easy thing to do. This is the place. Where? Sonnet Hill. <laughs> It's the best place around. I feel really good to have him here. It, um, it feels really good.